Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is known as Plant Fit Meg. We're going to find out how she got that name. She has an incredible story of not only reversing a few amazing diseases and the diseases are amazing it's amazing that she reversed it but it's incredible story but she also lost a lot of weight which you guys love to hear about 80 pounds to be exact eating a whole food plant-based diet and she's going to be making one of her favorite recipes a chocolate vegan zucchini cupcake please welcome plant fit meg to the show you look great i can't wait to hear your story thank you so much chef aj so exciting to be here and I met you six years ago at a conference, and here we are. It's very, very cool to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. You're so welcome. Well, sorry it took so long for me to get you on the show, but I've only been doing it about two years. Which conference did we meet at? Do you remember? Uh, we met at Remedy Food Project Toronto. <gasps> that was such a good one. Oh, it I was so Benji, good. I wish Benji would put his hat back in the ring. I know you know nobody could do yeah. it during COVID. I love that conference. I just thought, mm -hmm. I should have asked you this before because it may not be convenient, but do you have any before pictures? Because people love to see those. Um, I don't really have them handy. I don't think I can... Yeah, okay. I don't have them really on hand. I should have asked but, you, but we could probably find them somewhere. Yeah, and people can go to my website or my YouTube channel and check out what I look like before. And obviously, this is what I look like now. <laughs> ah, so how long ago did you lose the 80 pounds? Um, I started my plant-based journey six years ago. And so I decided to go vegan overnight. I made the decision after uh, we had our son. He was only four months old at the time. And I am a cancer survivor and I had been cancer free for 10 years at that point. And um, a lot of different thoughts going through my head, you know, I had survived cancer, I made it through, but I wasn't really thriving. I was just kind of surviving. We had our son, we were trying to def decide what we were going to feed him. And so I made the decision to make the change at that point for our health and quickly made the connections to animals and the environment as well. And so I went whole food plant-based from there and I've had some ups and downs along the way in my journey. I lost 70 pounds relatively quickly, I would say in the first six-ish months. So that was really quick because I was coming from a really heavily processed standard American diet. I was coming from eating, you know, takeout all the time, restaurant meals, convenience foods, a lot of packaged things. And so shifting to eating more whole plants was amazing. And um, I did sort of delve into the junk food after a little while, like, oh, I'm curious about this vegan burger and these vegan things. And I thought since they were vegan, they would be somewhat helpful. And I'm sure if I had, you know, just had one one off things, it would have been fine, but it kind of snowballed into the next thing and the next thing. And my health really suffered for it. I regained a little bit of weight and then had to get back on track with, you know, coming back to health and focusing on really sticking to whole food plant-based, going back to oil-free and um, here I am. Wow. So you said you went vegan or plant-based overnight. Why did you yeah. see Mentory? Did you read a book? How did that happen? Yeah, I think I was ready for change. I think that's the biggest thing is that I was feeling like I was surviving and not thriving. And I thought, you know, there's got to be more to this. I, I wasn't feeling great and I had chronic health issues and, um, I started to do my own research online and kind of look and find resources there. I watched a bunch of documentaries. I watched Forks Over Knives, which was really influential for me and um, a few other documentaries that were out at the time. And I just started delving into, you know, what's the healthiest way to feed my son? What's going to be the best way for us to have longevity and for all, my whole family to be healthy, really? So literally overnight. So what'd you do? Throw everything out? I mean, like I, I, that's most people yeah. <laughs> what, that quickly. Like, uh, so do you remember your last meal before becoming vegan? Yeah, I think I probably had like a chicken curry or something the night before, before I actually like made the decision. Um, but I just felt so strongly about it. I had watched, like I said, uh, Forks Over Knives and I watched Earthlings and that is incredibly difficult to watch. I cried through the whole thing and I just, I, I said, I can't, I can't do that. And so I spoke to my husband about it and I was like, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to 
try. And um, I made the case that that would be the healthiest way to feed our son moving forward. So that, you know, even if Chris, my husband, wasn't fully on board in the beginning, at least me and my son Riordan would be eating a plant based diet. And uh, so he thankfully agreed. And, you know, I showed him what information I had found and he agreed that that would be the way to go. Um, and eventually he did come around and he's vegan and completely plant-based at this point as well. Nice. How, how old was your yeah. son at the time? He was only four months old. Oh, well then he didn't really notice probably. <laughs> no, no. We ha- we were just kind of starting to think huh. about solid food and what do we feed him and what are his first foods going to be? So yeah, this is all he's ever known. So he kind of was already vegan because you don't really feed kids animal products really in the first four months, right? Yeah, he had cow's milk formula and then we switched to soy. Um, But yeah, otherwise he's been vegan the whole time. Yeah. Why do you think it is that some people like you and me just literally become vegan overnight? Other people take a really long time and other people really struggle because it it seems like your struggle wasn't staying vegan. It was staying out of the pleasure trap, the vegan junk food. Yes. Absolutely. I think um, a big part of change is being ready and willing to change. And I think when you have a really big why, that's really helpful in making the transition. And when you see the truth and you know what happens in terms of factory farming and things like that, in terms of veganism, you make that connection and that decision. And there was just no going back for me. And then in terms of um, eating a more healthful vegan diet and eating a plant exclusive and a whole food plant-based diet, um, again, it comes back to the why. And my health was really suffering. I was having flare-ups of my asthma, my endometriosis, chronic pain and chronic fatigue. And I, you get to a point where enough is enough and it's just not worth it anymore to eat the processed food and to Uh, delve into those things if they're not serving you anymore you know if it's literally just for the taste it's just not worth your health yeah absolutely tell me about your cancer diagnosis yeah so I I had ovarian cancer when I was 20 years old and um, that was really shocking Um, usually ovarian cancer is something that hits people in older age Um, so yeah, it was really scary time. It was, uh, I was really young. I was in school and trying to just live my life and I, it forces you to stop, right. It forces everything to just slow down. And, um, so I had to go have a couple of surgeries and, uh, undergo chemotherapy. And, uh, so everything was just kind of put on hold. Your life is put on hold when, um, your health is suffering like that. And, uh, so I went through conventional treatment because I haven't had no clue that diet or lifestyle played a role. I just thought, oh, it's my genes. It's bad luck. My dad's also a cancer survivor. So I just thought, you know, it kind of runs in the family. And unfortunately it just hit me at a, a young age. So no, no one had ever said to you, there's any link between the diseases you acquire specifically cancer and your diet. You'd never, not at the time. No, not at the time. Now, of course, I know that there's so much we can do to prevent and reverse disease. And we have so much more control and so much more power than we think we do. And that's a message I really try to get across to people that you're in control a lot more than you think you are. And I try to empower people to make those changes um, so that they can reduce their risk of disease in the future and they can lose the weight and feel great. Wow. Wow. That, that's So you have a clean bill of health. Like how did they, when you say you overcame cancer, did you do mm-hmm. testing? Like did, did the oncologist say, okay, you're cancer free now? How does yeah, that Yeah. So post chemotherapy, they declared me cancer free. And then at that point I had follow-up um, appointments, uh, ultrasounds and other, um, testing, uh, pretty regularly in the beginning. And then it's really spread out a lot, um, now because I'm 16 years cancer free. Um, so in the beginning they monitor you really, really closely. And then over time, um, it sort of spreads out and they don't, uh, watch you as closely because you're cancer free. You're doing well. Right. But no, none of the doctors ever said anything about diet. No, at the time I asked, you know, why me? Why do I have cancer? And they just kind of shrugged at me and, you know, oh, it's just, 
something that happens to people. There's a genetic component sometimes. And, you know, we don't really know why these things just happen to people. And uh, obviously now I know that there's more, more at play in terms of our diet. Wow. You also had, I, I heard, listened to you on, on Corinne Ninger's podcast, you, you, you struggled with asthma. Did that get better when you went plant-based? Yeah. So initially it um, got a little bit better. I was still on medication, but um, I was doing better with symptom wise. And then after delving into the vegan junk food, I kept having flare ups of all of my health issues. Um, And then since quitting that, I've been medication free for quite a while. Um, So yeah, I have the occasional symptom uh, if I'm sick or if it's really cold weather, uh, we'll flare it up a little bit, but otherwise um, I'm medication free and doing really well. That's amazing. Did did you know that the plant-based diet was so powerful for weight loss? Because it sounds like you were making the switch at first, really just for health reasons. Yeah, I think weight loss was always kind of secondary in my mind. So I really, my main focus was really my health and really getting handle on um, what I could manage that way and improving my health situation. And I have struggled with my weight and, you know, yo-yo dieted here and there and had my weight go up and down and uh, tried different diets in the past and had issues with over-exercising and really, really restricting my calories a lot and feeling hungry and things like this. So um, weight loss was part of the puzzle, part of the uh, adventure, but uh, health was always my number one priority. That's great. So yeah, yeah, tell tell us about like the kind of things you ate to lose those 80 pounds or 70, like that six months, that's like 12 pounds a month. It's like three pounds a month. Yeah, it was really pretty quick. Um, I think just because I was eating so much junk, like my, my whole meal plan, if you want to call it that was fast food, restaurant food. It was just so calorically dense and just over consumption to the max. And so I think that's why my progress was so quick. Um, in the beginning, I really tried to keep it simple. I did not like to cook at the time. I didn't really enjoy being in the kitchen. I wanted to just spend as little time there as possible. So I tried to really just keep it really simple for myself. And I made things that I already enjoyed and I would just remove the animal product from. So I ate a lot of uh, chili, a lot of pasta, soups, um, stir fries, things like that in the beginning, um, simple meals of potatoes and uh, vegetables, things like that. Just want to say we have a nice comment from Randy about how you have such pretty features. I love your hair. Oh, by the way. thank I, you. I, I had so my hair like that once. It, I, it, it's so easy to take care of, isn't it? It is. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, much, I would so much easier. To do that again, but I don't know if people... I don't know. That is amazing. <laughs> so, so how old is your son now? Uh, he's six. He's going to be seven this year. Yeah. Does he, does he know he's yeah. vegan or he just, eats Oh like, yeah. 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 We talked to him about being vegan and clearly he eats a lot differently than the kids at school and um, other people in the community. So we talk about that uh, a fair amount and yeah, he knows that he's vegan and that he eats a whole food plant-based diet. And, um, you know, he always makes comments to us about, oh, like the kids at school eat candy and the kids at school eat, you know, cookies and chips and this and that and the other. And we're like, oh, okay. You know, that's interesting. So um, he sees how differently he eats from other people, but he loves this food. He gets really excited about, you know, simple, easy foods like fruit and veggies you know, and uh, we make it fun for him. We always include him in uh, shopping and prepping food. And he likes to try to come up with his own little recipes and things. So yeah, it's really fun. That's good. Yeah. Cause yeah, I always want, I, does he want to be on the show? I always want to know from the perspective, <laughs> it, you know, cause kids eat what, you know, he doesn't have a car, he doesn't drive. So he's going to pretty much eat what you give him. Yeah, exactly. He eats what we eat and he loves it. And we, we have fun with it and we still make things that, you know, the typical kid would enjoy like pizza or tacos or things like this, but we just make it in a really helpful way. 
Yeah. Well, I just can't imagine how he's going to grow up because I, you know, definitely probably without weight issues or food addiction issues, like so many of us, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's just so cool to see that, you know, so I, I think that's amazing. You know, like Amy's saying, if I had a kid now, I would do things differently. I have a ton of regret. Well, you did the breast a good, you know, with what you knew at the time. So yeah, you can't go back. Exactly. That's, that's very, very cool. Can you, t- this is a question, Meg, that almost everybody on the show gets, even if they're not vegan, unfortunately. <laughs> well, uh, what do you eat in a day? Like, can you take us through a, a day of what you're, and also for exercise, what's your, what does your typical day look like? Sure. So um, my meals, typically in the morning, I'll have oatmeal or a smoothie, but I do like to mix it up sometimes. So I don't always eat breakfast foods, quote unquote, for breakfast. Sometimes I'll eat leftovers or I'll have, you know, potatoes and beans and veggies with a nice sauce or something. Um, I don't confine myself to just eating sweet foods in the morning. Um, I like to take after Chef AJ and eat my veggies for breakfast. So um, I like to do that. And then for lunches and dinners, um, I really mix it up. I like to eat um, tofu or tempeh, um, beans, greens, whole grains, all that good stuff mixed up in different ways. So sometimes it'll be a chili or a soup. Um, I'll have big salads with everything (laughs) thrown into it. Um, So yeah, I like to mix it up. And then in terms of exercise, I've really gotten into strength training lately. So that was kind of my, one of my goals went for the new year to really uh, get stronger and work on that. So I'm in the gym about four to five days a week at this point. And I do it because I love it. I don't think it's something that's necessary for people to do if you don't enjoy it. Find something that you do enjoy, find a form of exercise that is doable and is workable for you and fits into your lifestyle. But I'm just having a blast with it. So uh, that's my current routine. You're also a yoga teacher, aren't you? I'm a certified yoga instructor. I got certified just before the pandemic. So I didn't actually get into teaching because the pandemic happened and it was weird. Um, but I'm hoping at some point to teach and uh, maybe I'll do it online, which would be fun. Wow. That, that's good. Yeah. Do you do any particular type of yoga or when you train, do you te- learn all the different ones? Uh, so for my training, uh, it was Hatha yoga. And then I also did a um, therapeutic yoga uh, course, which was helpful with my chronic pain issues and things like that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So how did it work? Because your husband is on board now, but at first he wasn't. So a lot of people struggle in these mixed marriages. So how did that work, the transition of your husband slowly to veganism? Yeah, it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. And initially I sort of tiptoed around it and was like, you know, if you want me to make meat for you, then like, I'm, I'm willing to do that. And I was just very open, I guess. And, um, it just never came to me having to do that. He just ate what I made. And since I was the one cooking, he just ate what was served. (laughs) Right. And I was really lucky in that way that he was just so easygoing about it and just kind of ate what I was making at home. And then when he was out of the house and out and about, he'd make his own choices. So he would maybe have fast food from time to time or eat, um, eat meat or something uh, out of the house. But what started to happen was whenever he would eat those meals, he would start to feel really <laughs> not good. And so that it was kind of um, enticing him to make that change because he'd eat a meal out, feel really not great and have GI issues and just not feel well. And so then he would gravitate more towards what we were making at home. And uh, yeah, he came on board pretty quickly within the first six months or so. That's all it took? Wow. Yeah, it was really quick. Yeah, I was really, really lucky. That's incredible. That, that, that's, yeah. That, yeah, that was nice of you to, you know, offer to cook for, you didn't make it a, a, a battlefield in other words. No, it was really open to, you know, if you still want to buy cheese or if you still want to buy these things and have them in the house, that's okay. I just, I won't touch them. And I think we maybe bought like one block of cheese that went bad because he didn't get through it fast enough. And he was the only one eating that in the household and uh, we didn't want to waste our money. and. So yeah, he just 
ate what I was making. And he, he actually really enjoyed it a lot more than he thought he would too, because all the flavor comes from the spices and the sauces and, you know, the meat and the dairy and that stuff doesn't really have flavor without those things. So it was surprising for both of us at how much we actually enjoyed the food. Yeah. Susan says, you sure lucked out with your husband. I sure did. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, Uh, I agree. (laughs) Candy, who's watching live, wants to know if you're oil free. Yes, I'm oil free in my household. Occasionally, if we go out for a meal, out to a dinner or something, then I'll not be as concerned about it. But in my household day to day, we're oil free. Yeah, very nice. Uh, Have your chronic pain issues gone away from this diet, asks Monica. Yes, my chronic pain, chronic fatigue, completely gone. My energy improved so much in switching to a plant-based diet and specifically when I really honed in on the whole plant foods and eliminating oil and those meals out or things that happen are very occasional, very rare. It's not a daily or weekly situation. Um, So yeah, my chronic pain and chronic fatigue is gone. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Leah says, have you increased your protein since you've been exercising more? Yeah, that's interesting. I got sort of curious about digging into what the protein requirements would be now that I'm exercising more and focusing on strength training. And so I looked into the requirements um, and they are a little bit higher for someone who is as active as I am. So I pay a little bit more attention to it, but I try to just include more protein rich foods into my diet and into my diet. Um, meals and snacks. So I make sure I get beans in and tofu, tempeh. Um, Sometimes I'll have TVP, a little more processed um, textured vegetable protein. Um, Lupin beans are great. They're very high protein. Um, So I'll make dips and things out of that. Uh, So yeah, I've, I've upped my protein a little bit, I would say, made little shifts in my dietary pattern, but Um, overall, it's fairly comparable to what it was before. That's great. Who came up with the name Plant Fit Meg? Um, I did. I came up with the name. I wanted my name in there because it's me. And then I knew that um, having a plant-based diet and having a plant-exclusive diet, as you like to call it, was so important and improved my life so dramatically. Um, And then fitness has always been important to me, moving my body. And um, I was a dance teacher for many years and I taught Zumba for a while. And I've been through periods in my life where I couldn't move my body. So now that I can, and I have so much energy and I feel so good, um, I, I love to get active and run around with my family and we go skateboarding and (laughs) hiking and all these things. So I wanted to sort of incorporate the um, movement into my name as well. So that's where Fit Fit Meg was born. I like it. It's great. It's a great fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Says, what are your thoughts on soy? And do you have an opinion on bio bio identical hormones? Uh, Okay. So soy is great. Soy is wonderful. It, um, has wonderful phytoestrogens in it and it's great for you. Um, So I eat soy, I drink soy milk. um, I use it in my recipes and then um, yeah, I eat tofu and also edamame and soybeans are great. Um, And then what was the second part of that question? Um, What are your thoughts on bioidentical hormones if you have one? I don't, I never heard that term before to be honest. So I'm not too sure. I think it's like things like as trace and I'm I'm not sure either. So this isn't a doctor episode. If you have a, Hey, come back tomorrow. We have, (laughs) we have a medical doctor on tomorrow. So you can ask that question then. Yeah. Let's see. Here's a, do you eat the vegan cheeses? Um, not really. I'll occasionally we'll get a nut cheese. Um, but usually we don't, uh, eat the vegan cheeses. We make our own at home. Yeah, so much better. Do you do you work with people? Yeah, so I do uh, one-on-one coaching with people. I completed the uh, plant-based nutrition certificate with eCornell and the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies, and I also have a healthy weight loss uh, certification. 
Um, so I do work with people one-on-one -on -one to either transition into eating a plant-based diet or for people who want more support and more guidance and help with losing weight on a plant-based diet. Um, so you can contact me through my website or um, email me and uh, I'd be happy to set up a, a call if you're interested. I set up a 15 minute sort of introductory call just to say, this is who I am. This is what I do. What are you looking for? And to see if we're a good match or not, because I don't, there are certain things I don't do. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian, um, but I do have this coaching um, background and certification. So um, I love to help people out with uh, getting into eating more plants and also uh, getting a handle on the weight loss if they're having a hard time and need more support. Fantastic. Uh, there's a comment. Oh, where did it go? That people, you have a very inspiring Instagram, uh, uplifting Instagram, says Diana. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Yep. Hey, uh, Karen says, Meg is one of my fellow roomies. We do the exam room on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like to pop into the exam room uh, podcast and chat in the in the chat box there. So, yeah, it's nice to know that some roomies are here. Hey, roomies! Cool, cool. <laughs> well, you know, you got such an interesting and inspiring story. I forgot that you actually are going to make a delicious recipe. Want to tell us a little bit about this recipe? Yeah, so I I'm going to be making my vegan chocolate zucchini cupcakes with um, some frosting frosting is optional. So um, we've made this recipe without the frosting and then they're kind of more like a muffin style. And then with the frosting, it's a bit more decadent. Um, but I wanted to make something that was nut free so that it would be school safe for my son so that um, when he has his birthday or a special occasion or there's some kind of event where they're serving treats, we can send him with something uh, that is whole food plant-based and delicious. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the idea idea for the recipe came from and uh, it's all whole food stuff except for the chocolate chips which again are optional we've uh, made the recipe without and um, it's just as good without them it just adds that little extra bit of sweetness yeah what are which chocolate chips do you use there's so many out there now um I just usually buy the store brand ones that are the least expensive <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. Are, what, are your, what are your son's favorite things to eat um, his absolutely favorite thing is fruit, fruit of pretty much any kind. He eats bananas every, every day, multiple times a day. And uh, yeah, fruit is probably his favorite, favorite thing. And then in terms of um, dinner meals, he really likes to have uh, refried beans, like uh, tacos or burritos, something like that. That's great. Well, yeah. without further ado, I'd love to see this recipe. Break All right. Sneaking in zucchini. Yeah. Whenever you can sneak in some vegetables, why not? Right. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to get started with this. So I'm starting with one cup of oats here. And then I have a cup of oat flour and I just grind up oats in my Vitamix. Nice and easy. And then I have a third of a cup of cocoa powder here one and a half teaspoons each of baking powder and baking soda. That's the dry ingredients. I'll try to show you. Give it a little mix. And then I'll add my remaining ingredients, nice and easy. So I have about one and a half cups of shredded zucchini here. And it's about one large zucchini, or if you have two smaller ones, it's about that much. And if you have extra, you can just chuck it into your hash browns or in your mashed potatoes or your oatmeal in the morning. Good to yeah. go. Zucchini is such a neutral, veg it's actually a fruit, but it's a color. Yeah. It's so neutral when people say they hate veggies. They really hate zucchini, it's basically yeah. Exactly. It's so versatile. You can just kind of throw it into anything. Um, and then I have one cup of plant-based milk here. I'm just using unsweetened soy milk, but we've used almond as well. And that works too. I have half a cup of date syrup and I just mix dates with water. Nice and easy. Um, in my recipe, I use a little bit more date 
um, than water for the ratio, but you could do just a one-to-one -one ratio as well. And that works too. Um, I just like the little bit of extra thickness and sweetness with the extra, extra dates. Make sure I get all of that in there. And then I have a couple uh, teaspoons of vanilla here. This looks like a shot glass, but it's not. It's actually just a measuring, <laughs> measuring cup. So I'll give that a mix. Try to show you. I have a bit of a weird setup in my kitchen here. It's not super conducive to cooking demos, but that's okay. So before we got started, I did preheat my oven to 350 as well. And I also lined my tray here with some silicone liners. Um, you can get silicone uh, muffin pans as well, which I've heard are great. And, uh, or you can use parchment paper liners as well. Um, just don't use the liners that are not the parchment paper ones because they will stick. Um, so make sure you have something like that. Those are so pretty. Yeah, they're pretty cute. The little colorful, um, colorful liners there. So I'll just add my chocolate chips in. Again, those are optional. We made them without chocolate chips one day because I had run out and I didn't realize. And they actually turned out. So that's just um, an extra add in. That's optional. And I like to use these scoops. If you've been on my YouTube channel, you've seen me use these in a lot of recipes for a lot of different purposes. I have three different sizes of them. This is my medium, my medium scoop. And I just find it really handy to um, put things together. Try to set it up so I can show you a little bit what I'm doing. A question just came in from Randy. Yeah. When your son's friends come over, do they mind eating what he eats? Um, well, the pandemic has made things weird. So we haven't really had to deal with a lot of um, social gatherings or friends coming over and things like that. Um, when we have had sort of um, going to birthday parties and things, uh, we either just bring food with us or we just check in with the host to make sure that at minimum it's vegan um, is kind of the rule when it's a special event or something like that. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that goes with uh, friends coming over and things like that. I'm sure we'll be doing more of that as he gets a little bit older and now that the pandemic's are not as much of a concern. Have you ever made them without the cocoa powder, without the chocolate? I haven't. I That'd be an interesting experiment. I wonder what they'd taste like. I'm not sure. So I've um, filled all the cups, but I actually have a little bit of extra batter here. So I'm just gonna go through and add to any that look a little bit Hmm. Less full. Yeah. Bella said, you mentioned refried beans for your son. Yeah. What did you fry her beans with? Um, so we literally just put uh, beans, like canned beans, or we um, cook up beans in the instant pot. And then we mix it with salsa and some spices and then just mash it. And that's how we make them. And we absolutely love it. And um, I have a recipe on my channel and on uh, my website as well, if you wanna take a look, but it's super duper easy. It's uh, a quick one that we go to a lot because it's so simple to put together. Nice. Oh, I wanna ask you this, Meg, cause I asked this to pretty much to everybody that's lost yeah. weight. Do you ever worry that you could gain it back? Uh, no, no, I don't initially. Initially, I think I did. I sort of had that fear of, oh, what if? Um, but I'm just so comfortable eating the way that I eat now and having an active lifestyle um, that I feel very confident that I'm not going to regain the weight. Um, my weight has fluctuated a little bit. And um, I think in trying to build some muscle, 
if you're trying to build some muscle, you're probably going to gain a little bit of fat along with it at the same time. That's just sort of a natural process. Um, so my weight has uh, shifted a little bit with that, but nothing major, like, you know, five, 10 pounds, not concerned about it, not worried, still super healthy, feel amazing. And um, in terms of like a regaining of the bulk of my weight or anything like that, I, I don't have concern about that because I just love my lifestyle and I'm going to keep doing it forever. So that's great good about it. I know you live in Canada. I know that some people in Canada sometimes have a, a U.S. address for shipping. You, do you happen to have one of those? I don't know. Well, the reason is, is because every guest on the show, the first time they come on, gets two free bottles of California balsamic, but he can only ship to the U.S. Oh, no. Oh, that's too bad. I would love to try that out. Some call do, California you, are, balsamic. do you have anybody visiting you from the U.S. that could bring it or are you going to go? visit anybody no I, I don't it. think so I don't think so no all right hmm. well if you ever do hit me up if I'm still doing okay it, we'll make good on it it's unfortunate he just okay. can't ship to other countries um and that says will you ever grow your hair long again um I might I think at this point I just love that it's so easy and I've been playing around with bleaching it and having fun with it um so at this point I'm gonna leave it leave my buzz cut but uh, maybe at some point I'll get sick of doing the buzz every you know week or two and I throw it out great. again I would like to do it because I can't you. I, I can't find anybody to cut my hair now that I've moved to Lincoln everybody I call they go well, we're booked till the end of June how can you be what booked? it's so crazy I live here <laughs> May 3rd and I'm trying to get a uh, grooming for Bailey and a haircut for me and everybody's yeah. like yeah end of June it's like how can how can that be that's this so is, weird I know. I mean, I don't yeah. get it. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> Amy wants to know where in Canada are you? I'm in Kingston, Ontario. Yeah. So this is the um, cupcakes and I'm, I'm going to pop them in my oven actually. So I'm just going to step away for one moment. I'll be back and we'll make the frosting together. Oh my goodness. There's frosting. Who knew? That is great. I'll get to your question as soon as she gets back, Dina. If you're watching on Facebook, you can't see the recipe. So please consider watching on YouTube where everybody right. is. Hey, uh, Dina wanted to know if you do your weight workout at a gym with the weight machines or dumbbells or dumbbells, dumbbells, or do you do your weights at home? And if so, with what? Um, so I do like to work out at the gym. I do have dumbbells at home so that um, I can do some uh, things at home if I want to or need to, if I don't have time to get to the gym or something like that. But I do try to make it a priority and I do enjoy going to the gym. And at the gym, I use a combination. So I'll do machines and I'll also use um, dumbbells as well. Why are they yeah. called dumbbells? I don't know. That's an excellent question. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. <laughs> I just wondered. Yeah. So I have my trusty Vitamix um, blender here. And I'm actually starting my frosting with one cooked peeled sweet potato. So I love making icing with sweet potato. It is sweet and delicious. And, um, I actually just roasted these, uh, in the oven at 425 for about 40 minutes. I just cut them in half and put them, um, face down and, um, that works out really well. So I'll just add that to my blender. And then I have half a cup each of cocoa powder. Some more date syrup. Wait, do you use uh, any particular brand of date syrup or do you make your own? I just make my own and half a cup of water and a little bit of vanilla extract and so I will spare you the very loud blending noises <laughs> that this would create but basically I would just blend it up and use the tamper in the four corners and then if I wanted to thin it out slightly I would just add a little bit more water I like to taste test as well just to see um, 
see what it's like because I find um, sometimes the sweet potato, they're different sizes. So if you're using one, it might be, you know, a small one or a larger one. So I like to just have a little taste test before I um, add them to the cupcakes. And if they're a little, if it's a little too sweet, you can add a bit more cocoa or if you want some added sweetness, you can add some more date syrup. Um, I'll also mention that I have another version of this same frosting recipe that uses dates instead of the date syrup. So it's the same recipe, it's just all the ingredients are just in slightly different ratios. And um, that one is just a little bit thicker and a little bit richer tasting. It has more dates in it. Um, so it's a bit more calorie dense as well. Um, but I have those two options. So choose your own adventure if you're giving this one a go um, and show you my finished product here. So I have one here just with no icing, just to show what that looks like. It's more, it looks almost like a little muffin. Very cute. It looks and amazing. Then, have you ever tried freezing them? I haven't, but I should. Um, I find whenever I make them, we just go through them so quickly. Um, there's one there. And then I have a few more on a plate over here. These are also uh, kid approved. You cannot taste the zucchini, so don't worry if you're wondering about the zucchini in it. It just melts into nothing. Um, and these are omnivore approved as well. My, we made them and my in-laws tried them and they absolutely love them and asked me for the recipe. So, you know, it's a win when that happens. Well, I bet people don't even know there's any zucchini in there. No, no, they wouldn't know unless I told them. And I don't tell people, this is a tip, don't tell people what's in it until after they've eaten it. You know, if you're making black bean brownies or something that's a little bit weird potentially to people who aren't accustomed to eating this way, feed them first. And then after the fact, you can share, oh, and by the way, there was zucchini in that, or there was, you know, black beans in that. And then it's surprising and they're like, oh. Absolutely. That's it a kind of best, opens good, their mind. Good advice for any vegan food. Just don't tell them till like a week later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. Um, uh, do they need to be refrigerated? Asks Linda. Um, we do tend to put them in the fridge. I'm sure you could leave them out um, for a little bit, but yeah, we always throw them in the fridge. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. That, so, so I bet you're pretty happy with the way you look and feel now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling amazing. And um working on getting stronger. And I love that. I feel so empowered. And um, I think it stems from having times in my life that I just couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I couldn't carry my son around. I went through really some hard times. And so I think um, now having the energy and this zest for life that I have now that I just didn't have in the past um, is really exciting. And yeah, I'm thrilled with, um, making the change and sharing it with other people too, has been so cool. I started my YouTube channel in 2020 and it's been so much fun to uh, build community there and share with people, share my experience, share tips, recipes, all that good stuff. It's so much fun. And I think I got to a point in my plant-based journey where I was like, I have to share this. I have to you know, let more people know what's possible and um, add my story to all the other wonderful stories that are out there and all the other uh, wonderful, you know, plant-based experts and people who are sharing what they know and helping people out. People right. like you, Chef AJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see, there's a question. Uh, do you have a plant pure pod? Um, yeah, so my husband, Chris, and I, we co-lead our local uh, plant pod in Kingston, Ontario. So we do host monthly meetings. Um, we recently had a meetup where we discussed plant-based resources. So everyone uh, brought some of their favorite books and cookbooks, and we had a chat about that. We just met up at a park, and uh, that was really fun. Um, if you're looking for support, you can check out um, Plant Peer Communities to try to find a pod in your area. Um, but yeah, my husband and I co-lead our uh, pod in Kingston. Very cool. How long have you done that? Yeah. Um, a little over a year. Yeah. Nice. 
Uh, Jeff yeah, fun. wants to know, what organization did you get your healthy weight loss coaching certificate from? Uh, Canadian Fitness Professionals, CanFit Pro. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. And Annette says she really enjoyed doing a Mary's Mini with your guidance. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I did a Mary's Mini and I sort of put it on the channel and had people join in at the same time. And it was really fun uh, to give it a go. I'd never done it before. And so I wanted to give it a try. And I thought it'd be a good another good way to build community and share and uh, do a little challenge at the same time uh, with my audience. And then um, since that time, people have sort of looked at it to do a Mary's Mini on their own and give it a go. Um, so yeah, it was a really fun experiment. You know, I kind of live on Mary's Mini. I mean, not because I'm <laughs> to lose weight, because I'm lazy and I like eating the same thing. So my lunch yeah. for 10 years is the same. It's it's roast and honey yams and broccoli. And that that's Mary's Mini, just because that's my favorite food. Yeah, and it's so good. It's so tasty. It's so good. Are you able to get the, the kind of sweet potatoes that I'm in love with up in Canada? You know, the Hannah's, the Japanese. Not as much, not so much. We, I have, I eat the orange sweet potatoes because that's what I have easy access to. Um, but I hear you go on and on about the wonderful. You're so good. I mean, potatoes. it will change your <laughs> life. I'm not kidding. I feel bad for people that can't get them. Well, wow, you're just really quite an inspiration. Did you ever um, have a t conversation with any of the, the doctors like in oncology about what you're doing now and how it does sometimes help people with cancer? Um, I didn't, but I think that would be really interesting conversations to try to have with people and see if they would be open to having that kind of feedback or that kind of conversation. Um, yeah, it would be really, really interesting to see. And I also think it's been so long since I dealt with my cancer diagnosis and my cancer experience. It's been 16 years. So I, I would be hopeful that things have changed that things are starting to change in that aspect. And hopefully more doctors are becoming more educated about these things. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a naive sort of hope, but um, ideally uh, doctors are starting to learn more and more about how diet and lifestyle have an impact and they're teaching that out to their patients. Yeah, absolutely. What, what's the community like in general where you live in Canada as far as plant-based is? Um, so there are some people who are vegan or who are plant-based. Um, we have one vegan restaurant in town and there are some options at other restaurants, other places. Um, and so, yeah, we have um, a nice little community of people who either eat a whole food plant-based diet or who are uh, trying to eat more plant-based. And um, so that's really fun to connect with them. And um, yeah, so it's a nice little, nice little community. I wouldn't say it's like massive amounts of people, but I think it's always growing. The interest in plant-based eating is always kind of uh, growing and expanding, even in the six years since I went plant-based myself, you know, so much has changed in what's available and with people shifting to eating more plants. What do you wish you knew then that you know now? So, so many things. I think the biggest thing that I wish I knew was just that change is possible and that if you stick with it and if you're consistent, you have no idea where you're going to end up, right? Like if I could speak to my former self and um, tell her, you know, you can really cure yourself essentially of these diseases you can really you can lose 80 pounds just knowing that it's possible and believing in myself uh, I think in the beginning I was you know skeptical even though I was committed to making the change I was still sort of skeptical and um, saw other people making the change but didn't really fully believe that I could do it for myself for whatever reason and so um, I wish I could instill that into my my former self yeah. Any uh, book in your future? Um, I'm working on an ebook, and um, so I'm working on a recipe ebook, and um, I think I'll put a little bit of my story in there as well with some uh, different information. And um, I'm working on. I always have a lot of different projects on the go, and it takes me a while to uh, 
have them completed, but I'm considering uh, starting a membership program as well. And we'll see, we'll see what comes um, this year, but uh, yeah, lots of different projects on the go. Cool. Randy says, do you ever get upset? You seem so calm, sweet and laid back. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, thank you very much. I, yeah, I get upset sometimes. I mean, I'm human. Everyone, you know, gets upset from time to time. Um, but I'm pretty quick to turn things around. So if I am really upset, I, I do, I am prone to be a bit more on the anxious side, even though I do seem very calm and very uh, laid back. Um, my brain goes a mile a minute. So um, I am a bit more prone to be on the anxious side of things, but I always just try to put things into perspective, right? And um, just try to flip the script a little bit and look at things from a different perspective to kind of turn things around and make myself feel better. Nice. What's your very, very favorite plant food to eat? My favorite food. Oh my goodness. Um, if I could only pick one, probably potatoes. Yep. I love potatoes, just like Chef AJ loves potatoes. Oh, that's so cool. Hey, <laughs> I have a hey. signed copy. I have a signed oh, copy. It's there, like there's cool. a new, there's a new one I now, Meg, but, but people I are telling me they have, they have trouble getting it in Canada for some reason. That is so cool. A I have signed this one copy. too. Well, when I'm dead, Nate, <laughs> oh, that is so great. Thank you. I, this is a question, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to, but Don wanted okay. to know how old you are, if you're allowed to tell that. Yeah, of course. I don't mind sharing my age. I'm 36. I'll be 37 in July. That's great. Yeah. Okay. I should have asked you before if there's something you didn't want me to ask because I some people are sensitive to that. There was oh. one that said you better not ask me that. And I didn't. And you'll never know which guest it was because we're <laughs> over a thousand shows now. Um, Susie says, does the frosty come out thick like peanut butter or thin like maple syrup? Um, it's really thick. So I'm not sure if you can sort of see on the cupcake here. I'll hold it way up to the camera, but I can hold it upside down and it won't drip. It's quite um, thick. Those look great. Those look great. But I could be your mom. You're 36. That's so fun. <laughs> that was that was a great age. A great age. Well, you are just a delight and inspiration. And I wish you every success in your career and in your family and in your health. And thank you so much for uh, being plant based and inspiring other people to be plant based and for having a plant based family. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. This has been so much fun, and it's so incredible and so exciting to be here and to think that I met you you know six years ago at a conference when I was just getting started and then to be here now is just so so cool so thank you so much for having oh me God. the pleasure was all mine and Diana said I thought you were in your she thought you were in your 20s so good thing we asked Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks so much. And seriously, Meg, if you ever either get to the States or you have somebody from the States coming to you, please email me. I want to get you those vinegars because they're so good. Especially yeah, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll let yeah. you know because I'd love to take you up on that. I've been eyeing those. They look so delicious. They really are. You get to pick two flavors. And, uh, you know, just right now, especially pandemic and post-pandemic, you really can't ship out of the U.S. So anyway, yeah, th 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 thanks so much and enjoy those cupcakes. Thank you so much. Have a okay. great day. Take care, Megan. Thanks all of Bye. you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow a little bit later at 2 p.m. Pacific time when my guest is Dr. Renee Thomas. She's a medical doctor that is now the medical director of the Fasting Escape. We had Dr. Renee Gershwald on last week who was talking about how now they can medically supervise you fasting at home. I remember in your story, you actually started out with a juice fast, didn't you? Yeah, I did. The first five days of when I made the decision overnight, it was, I decided to do that to really cleanse my palate and just start fresh, start anew. And uh, that was great. I haven't really juiced since then. It was just sort of my starting point. But uh, yeah, it was a, a great way for me to get started. Great. Well, good. Thanks. All right. Well, you take care, Meg. Thanks, Jeff AJ.